Let's go, uh, let's go into uh, a little bit of 202. So let's go a little bit deeper on, um, uh, on positioning uh, with the, the lats, the necks. So if you're already good on the basics, you're already good on the fundamentals, and you're like, all right, Josh, this is all old hat. Well, super cool. What I want you to do is think about how to make your swing and your hinge more powerful. One of the things I see a lot, uh oh, we got a train coming by. Oh, it doesn't matter. One of the things I see a lot is, my microphone's gonna cut that out now anyway, <laughs> is people, people are reliant on uh, the hip hinge so much so that they leave out their legs and their quads and they don't get all the power that they could. So show me a deep 90 degree hip hinge, Bootsy. Okay, now what I want you to do is bend your knees, drop your hips down and let your chest come up. Not that low, a little bit more, higher chest, higher hips, reach your hips back, more, there you go. So with a, just a little bit of, of changing of the ge geometry, Bootsy can recruit her quads to, be, to help her with explosive power here uh, versus really relying on a pure hamstring. It's just a, it's exactly the same, go ahead and stand up, exactly the same as if you're doing like um, a, a, a stiff, a, a stiff-legged RDL versus a true deadlift. Like a stiff-legged RDL, you only have some muscles, specifically the hamstrings and low back, but a, a full-on deadlift where you're bending the knees and getting low, it allows you to recruit more. Same thing with the swing. So when you're, when you're doing your swings, video yourself, challenge yourself to see what percentage of your movements coming from the hip versus the leg. It's not 100% and zero, right? It should be 60, 40, 70, 30, depending on your geometry and how, or your anthropometry, the, the, the length of your femur and your shin. But let's play with Bootsy's swing a little bit to make it, see if we can make it more powerful. All right, so give me five reps here real quick. Boom, blam, blam, good, awesome. Okay, first of all, really good. Now, all we're gonna do is, when that kettlebell pulls you underneath, you're gonna soften the knees, so you're gonna bend the knees just a little bit and, and allow it to pull you just a little bit deeper, but with some knee bend, so let's see it. Boom, boom. Nice, there you go, just a little bit, yeah, it's awkward, right? Yeah. You feel like you're gonna fall over, yeah. yes. <laughs> so, uh, this goes back to like how grounded are your feet, like and, and whether or not your tripod is keeping you anchored. Because if you make an adjustment, like you bend your knee a little bit more, you go a little bit deeper, and you're leaning, what's going to happen is it's going to be revealed where you're, uh, uh, like, like where you're unstable, because you're going to go in that direction. So uh, when Bootsy started to bend her knees a little bit and got deeper into that hinge and uh, and moved a little bit further it became highly unstable, so you have to play with it. Where do you feel the stress in your body? Uh, right now, my feet. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Like, she, uh, Bootsy's like, I can feel, the, I can feel the, the stress in the muscles in my feet when I'm doing my swing, which is a great way to be, that means she's being really active. And so feel free to sw do your swings with your, uh, like with your shoes off, in, you know, barefoot or in socks, so you can feel the muscles of your feet grabbing the floor. That will help a lot. Now, let's talk about hamstring tension and maximizing this. So, um, so go into, go into a, a deadlift. In fact, yeah, even grab that because it'll help you, right? So when you're loading up your kettlebell swing, so uh, reach, your, you reach your hips down and back like you're getting into a, a swing position. Do you feel hamstring tension? Nice. So. What Bootsy's doing is she's reaching her butt back behind her center of gravity while she has pressure in the front of her feet and bend in the knees. And so it's really easy to assume a very similar position and not feel that, that strain in the belly of your hamstring. So when you're setting up, challenge yourself to increase the tension. Now here's what I want you to do, Bootsy. I want you to, you're gonna, you're gonna continue to do this, so you're gonna, gonna do a swing, but before you start, I want you to, to gently drop your hips a little bit further and reach them back. There you go, nice. Feel how that bowstring is loading? Yeah. So just in that little tiny drop of the hips, 
She lengthens that spine and creates, creates a little bit more tension in the hamstring. All right, 10 reps, go. Boom, boom. And then now you know the sensation. Once you do that, you know what sensation you're looking for to come back and create over and over again. Nice. So, Whew, yeah. increasing the hamstring tension at the base. If you have a good start position, typically you're going to have a good end position. Now, let's talk about necks for a second. So get in the position. So, got a good base. Hip, hips are back. Hamstrings are tight. Now what you're going to do is, actually stand up so we can get a really good visual on this. So in order to avoid loading your neck, one, your lats have to be on. And to keep your neck in a neutral position, it's not looking down or looking up. It's sort of pretending you've got a, a tennis ball and you're going to give yourself a double chin. You're going to grip that tennis ball and pull it into your, into your neck and chest. Nice. So you're, you have a little space. You're not, you don't want to have no space. We also don't want to lift that neck and chin and uh, expose that spine to unnecessary extension. There's a lot of reasons for that, and I won't get into them. But let's look at how we do that in the swing. So she's going to load, get down, get ready, load up, give herself that double chin. And she's going to start to drag her shoulder, yeah, down and corkscrew that, that, those lats uh, bring those shoulders into the rib cage, and when she does that, that immediately takes tension away from the neck and the C7, T1 vertebrae up here, puts that tension in the upper back, which is awesome. That's exactly where we want it. And, and last but definitely not least, Bootsy is going to uh, bend, the, bend that handle of the kettlebell. Those that those elbows are going to begin to point forward. So she's getting into a really strong neutral position. The upper quarter, upper back is really loaded. Now go ahead and fire out five. Boom. Lock it out. Boom. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Woo. At, yeah. <laughs> it takes tremendous energy to focus. So when you're, when you're getting into these details, Pick one thing that you need to work on and dive deep into that so that your posture gets better, so that your training gets better, and your power gets better in the swing and in the other hinge positions that require the, the, the similar sequences of recruitment. So we've got the percentage of hinge that comes from the hip versus the knee, how much hamstring tension you're, you're getting into in the base of your, of your swing. We've got the length of the neck, neck position, lat tension, hands, corkscrewing, opening up the jar, bending the bar, bending the handle, however you want to refer to it, whatever cue means something to you, and, um, and all of those things working in tandem to create a better experience. So you've got plenty of stuff to work on, and always, always, always start with the basics and give yourself some time in your, in your warm-up. You should be doing some uh, some light warm-ups. If you're doing a lot of swings and, and uh, stuff with the kettlebell, you should always be doing three, four, five, you know, six sets of warm-ups uh, so that you can practice and rehearse these things. And if you have any issues, you want to identify them with that lighter weight. That way you're not doing the 100-pound swing and really uh, getting yourself out of whack when you might have been able to fix that, uh, that training problem or that technical problem a little bit earlier. Hope that was helpful. Uh, for those of you who missed part of this, we'll be recording it. And uh, if you need to, to see the, uh, the video again, well, we'll send it out to anybody. Just DM me if you want to check that out online a little bit later on YouTube. Continue to train hard. Continue to build muscle, burn fat, and bring forth the warrior within. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>